What's up everybody? Apex Legends Season 16 is here with exciting new restructuring of Legend classes and massive shifts in Legend and Weapon meta. There's also a shift in input meta as we are seeing a lot of pros switching from mouse and key to controller. CEO Imperial Hal even switched inputs last season and ended up winning ALGS London and took tournament MVP while playing on controller. With that being said, you need to make sure that you have your controller settings dialed for season 16. This video is going to showcase my ALCs I've dialed in for you to try out and show you how to tweak them to work perfect for you and your individual settings. Let's dive in and get your controller ready for season 16. So if you head on over to the controller tab in the settings, I run everything on default other than menu cursor speed. I have a little bit higher, but that is my preference. You can set yours however you like as well. Uh, moving on down, I do have my movement dead zones on small, inverted lip controls on off, and vibration on off as well. The main thing that this video is going to be focusing on is your advanced lip controls, your ALCs. So we're going to click on there. Um, you have to have it turned on. Dead zones, this is controller dependent. For me, I think a smaller dead zone is better. However, anything around 0 to 5% is kind of what you're looking for. This is the size of the inner range in which the stick input will not be registered. So a smaller dead zone is generally better as more input allows for finer control. If you have a really high dead zone, if you crank yours up, you can move your stick quite a bit without it registering anything at all. A typical like normal setting for a classic would be around 16%, which you know, a higher dead zone will allow you to kind of fix stick drift and, and this and that but realistically, you should be having this lower. Me personally, I like five. I've tried it lower around one, two, and three, and I find it is just a little bit too fine for whatever controller I'm using, and it doesn't actually help me out with any aim. So I like five. I found that kind of be the sweet spot for me, regardless of the controller that I'm using. My outer threshold, I have set at 2%. Your outer threshold is the width of the outer buffer, defining the boundary of max stick input so th if you were to up this all the way up it changes quite a bit so that is basically going to start triggering any of your extras any of your ramp ups all that stuff so you do want that to be quite a bit lower so i have that stuck at two response curve i have two as well this is the shape of the magnitude of remapping applied to stick input it affects how sensitive the stick is across its range of input and lower values can feel really twitchy, higher values can feel dull. So you do want to find what works best for you. For me personally, I like it to be lower around two. This is kind of a linear feel as far as how your, your input's going to respond. For optic settings, I highly recommend you tweaking these. If you go into per optics, um, typically these would all be set at one. I find one on a one times site is lovely however if you do want finer control and and a little bit more speed as far as tracking someone when they're in the air or say they're going up a gravity lift you're going to want these to be bumped up just slightly to give you a little bit more accuracy the two times sight i have at 1.1 same with the three times sight i don't like those to be too much higher from what my norm is the four times six times and eight times i have bumped up to 1.2 and the 10 times optic i have at 1.3 this allows me to use these sights with a little bit more finer control for greater movement and greater accuracy. Coming down here, this is where all the magic starts to happen. Um, the difference between this set and this set, this is your uh, look sensitivity. So when you're just looking around and your hip fire, that is what you're going to be focusing on with the first group. The second group is all about aiming down sights. So I like to have mine quite high here, and this is very much a linear input as I have no extras and no ramp up really on. And this is just general tracking for hip firing and for moving around. I like it to be quick so I can turn quickly, I can move quickly, the game feels a lot faster, a lot smoother. I have mine set at 300 and the yaw is left and right, so that's your horizontal axis. And then your pitch is up and down, so your, your vertical axis. And I have that at 270. I like mine a little bit lower on that. And that'll just help me with uh, recoil control as far as when the recoil does pull up, it gives you a little bit more control over that, having that sensitivity a little bit lower. I have my extra on 10, um, which really doesn't do all that much. I just found I liked it a little bit more and the rest turned down to zero. So this is very much more of a linear sense. My ADS, however, 
I like to have my ADS much lower. So you are letting uh, aim assist do a little bit more work for you. But when your ADS is low, and this is pretty much like a three to a 3.5 as far as like your traditional classic sense. But when your ADS is low, it's really hard to track. So what I've done is I've gotten more of a classic sense as far as my ADS is concerned. And I have my ADS extras as 40. So basically, when your stick input is at a maximum, so when you crank your joystick all the way to that outer threshold, it's going to give it a little bit of a boost. It's going to speed it up a little bit. So if I'm doing my finer controls and then I was to go all the way to the outside of my joystick, it's going to speed up just a little bit, kind of help me get to where I want to get to. And that is the same thing with the ADS ramp up time and delay. This just is a matter of when the stick hits that maximum, so when it goes all the way over to the right or all the way over to the left, when you hit that maximum, it's how quickly it's going to speed up for you. So I have that at 20%. You don't want that too, too high because it's all of a sudden going to go from your slower input to being like, boom, and it's going to be twitchy and it's going to be glitchy and you don't, you don't really want that. So I found that this really worked for me because in the past, I used to have my ADS and my ADS pitch speed much higher around like 200, 250. It was very similar to what I had for my look sense. And so by lowering these values and having more control when I'm locked in, I am able to have that speed that I like, that sensitivity that I like by adding these ADS extras and ramp up times in there. So you're gonna find that to be something that you can tweak a lot. And uh, this is really where your preferences come in as far as what you're looking for. So these are my settings, what I like, and I'd recommend that you give them a shot and see how you like them. But if you find that these settings are a little bit quick for you, you should definitely just kind of go in the range, see what works. And then if you find that the hip fire is just a little bit too fast, lower that down. If you feel like it's fast just uh, on your left and rights, then that might be where you need to change it on the horizontal axis. If you find that it's a little bit quick on your vertical, just tweak it by like a small amount. And when I'm saying a small amount, I mean like, by a value of 10. And then we could like go and try it out again and try it out by a volume of 10 again. And that is gonna be, that is gonna be absolutely huge for you. The last thing I wanted to mention to you before we conclude this video is every controller is gonna be different. Whether your controller has uh, stick drift or if you have um, longer sticks as far as like a left joystick and a right joystick, one being longer or one being shorter or both being the same size, um, this is going to be a huge factor in what sense you're able to use on your controller. For me personally, I use an aim controller. I have one longer stick. The, the right joystick is longer than the left joystick. I do have back paddles. So something to consider if you are looking to get a pro controller, you can use code Vander at aimcontrollers.com. Get yourself a sick discount, but something to consider having a right joystick that's longer is going to give you more control and you're going to be able to use different sensitivities for your controller um, because you will have more control over them and it's going to help you out huge back paddles is something that's huge on a controller in a game like apex because you are able to map them to slide and jump where you never have to take that right thumb off the sticks and you can have more and better control while you're moving in the game. And movement is honestly key. If you can hit your shots in this game while you're moving, that is the goal. But nonetheless, I hope this video helped you guys out and get you ready for season 16. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Here's a couple more videos on the screen that you can check out that may entertain you or may help you out moving forward. If you are looking for a full settings guide, please do check out my season 15 settings guide as I break down every single one of my settings that I use in Apex Legends.